fans, uh, welcome to another character bio. As promised, uh, I know it's taking me a little bit of time, but as promised, we're going to go ahead and cover uh, Bumblebee today. Bumblebee is one of my favorite uh, Transformers Prime characters. Uh, one of the things I will give credit for from the Michael Bay universe is how much cooler uh, Bumblebee was in his, uh, in his movies than in the original cartoon. I think we all know that in the original cartoon, he was a Volkswagen Beetle, he was the underdog, um, he just wasn't, I mean, he was kind of like a sidekick character uh, versus being the, uh, the warrior that he was portrayed to be in the Bayverse that carried over into the Transformers Prime Universe. Uh, we've seen a lot uh, in Bumblebee. We've actually seen a, a quick amount of growth, if you think about it. He's, um, he spent season one and season two being the scout, and he even mentioned to Smokescreen how he was, he was taking his time didn't want to rush it. He wanted to get promoted back on Cybertron, right? His homeland. So it made sense. Um, at the end of uh, season two, um, he takes down, or sorry, at the end of season three, he takes down um, Megatron, and um, and so he's 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 the big hero, right? Um, he gets his voice box repaired, um, and so by the time Predacon's Rising comes, he's quickly he's going from scout to warrior as we see at the at the very beginning of of uh, predacons rising but due to the circumstances that take place within that film he's got to actually step up to the plate and be a leader and uh, if i'm not mistaken smoke screen is a smoke screen even asks him like who made you leader and he's like i'm i'm not leading i'm tracking right kind of bumblebee was hesitant but at the same token his actions said otherwise he was being a leader uh, he was there, and, and, and between him and R.C., and even R.C. kind of recognized the leadership role in him. And she's like, hey, you know, we, we got to get this done. We, we can't sit around here and wait for somebody. It's like, you, you got your voice, man. You got to use it. So throughout the rest of the film, we actually do see him um, step into that leadership role. And, and that one, I guess that instance or that moment, right, carries on through into our film, right? Uh, Ultra Magnus, uh, we, we've gone over his bio, how he is now taking over for Optimus Prime since Optimus Prime sacrificed himself. Uh, there is no Matrix, right? So Ultra Magnus does not possess the same strength or wisdom that Optimus Prime had due to the, uh, the influence of the uh, Matrix of Leadership. So Ultra Magnus realized that he's going to need some help. And one of the really cool things I enjoyed about Transformers Animated was how they switched the roles of a Prime up. So for instance, Prime uh, in, in almost every single uh, iteration of Transformers is the head honcho, right? Except for Transformers Animated. They did something really interesting and it really worked. Uh, I, I kind of like the concept right off the bat. It was something different um, and, it, and it allowed for other Primes to be there, right? So Ultra Magnus was the head had honcho and it, it was like ultra was the, the like the su supreme rank it was the highest rank that you can get was ultra and then uh, underneath that were the primes right you had long arm prime you had rodimus prime optimus prime and sentinel prime so you could have various primes as kind of like sub commanders and those sub commanders would would command their own little platoon if you will i really really enjoyed something like that and uh, in, in hallmark of that we're kind of going to do the same thing the fact that ultra magnus realizes that he's got he, he, you know, he can't fulfill uh, this leadership role the way that Optimus did, uh, having the limitations. He's going to lean on the, the, the Autobots who have shown that leadership. And that's going to be uh, RC, which we already covered, and it's also going to be Bumblebee. Right? Those are his two new lieutenants, uh, naturally so, due to the amount of experience that RC has, right? Uh, she's going to fit that role, and due to the fact of uh, the actions that Bumblebee showed in Predacons Rising, it only made sense that he would fit the leadership role. So those two sub-commanders, if you will, are going to help Ultra Magnus, and, and they're going to help, um, you know, share the responsibility, if you will. But let's go ahead and go into his bio, and let's see what his bio says. His bio says... Having always been a great scout, Bumblebee endeavors to become an equally good Autobot leader. He is determined to continue the restoration of Cybertron in the name of the Great Prime who helped save their planet, as well as make his own decisions 
rather than having to rely on his teammates plans a lot of information there right uh, we 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 see not taking rid into into consideration but in rid bumblebee does become the leader of his own group um i, I that's not my intention uh it was not my intention when i when i uh, wrote the story right as i mentioned before I actually got this idea or inspiration from Transformers Animated and the way they broke up into subgroups. So we're going to see Bumblebee fit into that leadership role. And, and he's going to continue to progress throughout the trilogy. Uh, in what ways? We'll have to wait and see. Um, he is definitely uh, a character who fills that position nicely, right? He's, he's in command. He's in charge. He knows what he's got to do. He, he, he knows his way around the ropes, right? So um, he, he's a trusted friend of Optimus Prime. Um, there's so many good things about, uh, about Bumblebee, right? Uh, he's definitely dedicated to seeing the restoration of Cybertron. I think they all are. Um, but even more so uh, with that line of him wanting to get promoted on Cybertron kind of shows the connection that Cybertron ha um, excuse me, that Bumblebee has with his home planet of Cybertron, right? And then in addition to that, right, we're going to see how he really just comes to his own, right? Uh, uh, I think everybody unanimously loved Bumblebee in the Transformer Prime. I love them in a way that I, that even more so than in the way that I love the movies, right? In the movies, he couldn't talk either, which was really annoying for me. And the way that he used the radio and all that stuff, it, it was a little, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. It was a little bit annoying. I like the, the beeps in Transformers Prime. I actually like that so much more right um it was really and then the way that they explained that really uh ratchet couldn't fix it because um though some of those components like the t-cog were specific um they were biometrically designed for them i thought that was really interesting right and the whole terms of of cna instead of dna i, I thought that was really good there's so many things about the transformers prime had that really helped to make sense of the lure of transformers right so we're, we want to continue that in our story, we're going to see Bumblebee lead as normal. We're going to see him step up to the plate. We're going to see him take uh, adversity head on like a bull. And we're going to see him plow right through whatever as much as he can. right? And it's not going to be him by himself. He's going to rely on the term that Optimus Prime uh, kind of left Ultra Magnus with, and that's family. And we covered that, I think, in, in his bio, in Ultra Magnus's bio, is that family is a concept that he's really adopted. And he's going to look on onto RC and Bumblebee to help continue to build up and develop the family. So uh, another cool thing about Bumblebee is his vehicle mode. As I mentioned before, he uh, his vehicle mode is modeled after or inspired after the the Camaro. Another cool thing. I think I think it, it would be unanimous that the Camaro is way cooler car than the the Bug, right? The, the Beetle. Um, so. Again, uh, kudos to Michael Bay on that one, right? Um, he was the one who, who, who did that. Um, so, yeah. So, guys, that's pretty much all I have on Bumblebee. Again, one of my favorite, if not, well, one of my favorite. I'm not going to say the favorite because I have, between Optimus Prime, RC, and Bumblebee, I, I can't pick and choose, really. Um, I like all three of them. They are my top three favorites for the Transformers Prime universe. And so, from, from the original cast, right, if, if I bring in... The characters that I'm working on, I, I would add Springer to that, right? Uh, so, so guys, that's pretty much it. What we'll do is we'll wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for following us. Um, I'm not sure what the next character we'll get into. I'll have to take a look and see who's left. I think, I think from the Destructicons, I don't think I've done Scourge. So maybe I'll do Scourge. Uh, and if not, I'll do one of the Combaticons, maybe Blast Off or something like that. We'll see. But uh, we'll, we'll cover that next month. Uh, we'll, we'll do the bio. Keep in mind that our next project update is going to come out pretty soon. Uh, today is actually the last day of the month, so project update will probably happen. Honestly, it's, it's the 4th of July weekend, so uh, it's probably not going to happen until after the, the holiday weekend. So until then, guys, uh, I wish everybody who's celebrating this weekend a happy and safe celebration. Please be safe out there. Uh, I'm going to be celebrating. Um, I really enjoy looking forward to uh, my country's Independence Day. So um, until then, guys, I will see you guys. Be safe. And uh, we'll talk again uh, at the project update. Take, out, take care. Peace out.